and welcome to another episode of My Life Experiences. I'm your host, Wezi Nyanewa Sosola. So, in case it's your first time to be to this channel, this is a place where I share with you some of the experiences that I've gathered in life and the lessons I've drawn from them with the hope that someone may listen, get inspired and learn from these experiences. In the olden days, the wisest king that has ever lived, King Solomon in the book of Ecclesiastes said that there is nothing new under the face of the earth. Everything that happens has ever happened before and it keeps repeating over and over and over again. That's why, guys, I'm so encouraged every day to share these experiences with you. I'm in cognizance of the fact that somebody else out there is going through similar situations, is going through similar challenges. And if I share my experiences with them, it may impact a life. Whether it be one life, whether it be two lives, I'm satisfied as long as the word gets delivered out there. So that's why I'm here, guys, making these YouTube channels, sharing with you uh, all my experiences. <clears throat> so today I just want to bring an awareness to the challenges facing the girl child in particular. Today I want to talk about menstruation. You've heard me right. I'm talking about menstruation. And I'm calling it a challenge or a struggle because it comes with so many discomforts to the young girl. Just to explain these discomforts, the first one is that, um, you know, a girl, it, this, this situation or phenomenon comes to girls, children basically of between 11 to 14 years old, or it can even start as young as 9 years old, or as old as 15 years old, but that's a very young age. And when it happens, these girls, it's just a surprise to them, it just happens from nowhere. And it happens to, for many years to as old as they can get. And, but my focus today is for these young girls. When this happens, they are expected to be on top of their games, the, on top of their game, to, to take this as a private matter. Nobody should know. They should navigate this hygienically, washing themselves thoroughly without emitting any smells. And also sometimes it comes with a strong excruciating abdominal pains. For example, my, myself, I'm one of those girls who faced excruciating abdominal pains to the point that I used to roll on the ground just crying so that maybe the, the, the pain may be alleviated a bit. And this is the kind of pain that sometimes it doesn't react or go, it doesn't go uh, from um, these mild painkillers like panadols, the brufen, sometimes they do, it doesn't go. It just gets there until nature itself decides that it's enough, this pain should go away. <clears throat> and during this time, people expect life for the girl to go on as normal. They expect her to be in the classroom and to concentrate. They expect the child also to be at, 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 at home and do their normal no more chores during this time. Another area where, where it affects is that, as you know, during menstruation, the hormones, they are just running helter skelter, the estrogen levels, they are fluctuating, progesterone, testosterone, they're just going all over the place. And because of that, the girl becomes so moody, their moods changes. And people tend to say that, you know, adolescents are so difficult, they're just moody. But let us learn to come down to the level of these girls and really understand them. It says that, um, say hi. Hi. Okay. It says that right the edge blends. I'll, I'll help you later. I'm coming. Okay. That's why I hate you all. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Thanks. Don't come again, okay? <clears throat> Until I finish. Yeah, so that's what my son, <laughs> sorry guys, yeah, so that's what I'm saying, the people are saying that, oh, girls are so moody, but let's come down to their level and understand the girls that this is really a challenge that they are going through. One experience that I would like to share with you one day, when I was in the classroom in Form 1, 13 years old, the teacher told me that, Wesley, can you please go to the staff room and get for me a book? <clears throat> and when she said that, this is the time of the month for me when I was also menstruating. 
And for me, my menstruation is so, that time it used to be so heavy. And when the teacher said that, I was so frightened to stand up and go to the staff room. I was so filled with anxiety to the point that I said that to the teacher that no, I don't want to go. I basically refused to go to, 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 to take that book. And once I said that, everybody else in class, the boys, the girls, they started laughing. They were murmuring, just assuming that I was just being rude to the teacher without knowing the real cause of my refusal at that time. I wasn't able to explain as I, to them as I've said that this is considered to be a private matter. <clears throat> Fortunately enough, the teacher did not insist that I should go to the staff room to get the book. She sent somebody else, they went and they got that book. But until now, it bothers me because I don't know what they, I always ask myself that what was the teacher's impression of me this day when I had refused to go? What did she tell her friends? And I really wish that one day if I can just run into her and explain myself to her that you know what? The day when I refused to go to the staff room, it's because I was so frightened, the girl in me was so frightened to stand up among all those children in case I may have a heavy flow and I miss myself and everybody else is looking and they start laughing at me and they humiliate me. That's why I refused because of the heavy flow that I was having. So that is a struggle guys, the excruciating pain, the mood changes and all that navigating that but does this issue really get the attention that it deserves or maybe sometimes we just say that oh this is one of those things people from a uh, time in memorial have been going through this or women have gone through this as far as i'm concerned if you were a biological woman you've gone through this scientifically i think that is it so Maybe you may be thinking that maybe people have been going through this since time in memorial. But I know that in olden days, some girls were told not to cook when they are going through this. In the days of our parents, literature says that. And uh, also, they were being told not to put salt in the food because they were understanding this situation that it's not, it is a difficult situation because sometimes the girls could get sick and it's a hygiene issue. They were told not to cook, they are told not to put salt. So we have to come to the girls level and understand and sympathize with them. So what can we do to lessen these struggles that the girls are facing? I just thought of three main ways myself because you know the first one is that at school level, how can schools put in place policies to make it easy for girls to approach teachers, ask for extra lessons in case they missed out on classes because of the menstruation challenge. Maybe they didn't go to school at that time because I know in the rural areas, people even drop off from school because of these challenges. So sensitization to the girls, empowering them that you should be able to meet the teachers and tell them that you need extra lessons without you being required to explain yourself. Even sensitization to the teachers that you, shall, you can be able to help girls with extra lessons without asking them to explain themselves because of these challenges, so many challenges that girls go through. The other area that I think that we can be of help is by provision of sanitary materials to these girls. For example, sanitary pads. As part of the government processes of distributing learning materials to the school, if they can include in classes like standard 7, 8, form 1, form 2, these classes whereby girls are between 12 to 11 to 14 years old when they are just starting this experience, if they can distribute some pads disposable parts to them or cotton wool because it's not everybody who can afford this for me for example when i started this my mother had to get me 
a cloth, um, a wrapper, uh, we call it in the local language, shitenje. So she got this shitenje and cut in smaller pieces, um, just bigger than a handkerchief size, a little bit bigger. And she cut many pieces of these shitenjes and she folded them. And she told me that if you are menstruating, just get one of these, fold it and use it. When it gets wet, you have to wash it and replace it with another one. When the other one dries and so on and so forth. So most of these kids, you, uh, you, you should know that um, in the rural areas, they do not have access to pads and they also do not have access to cotton. So how if we can make this, the government or whosoever can make this um, available to these kids so that they should be comfortable in their learning. <clears throat> and also provision of things like tablets of soap among those learning materials so that they should be able to clean those shitenges, I mean those cloth that they are using because you know if they don't have it they may smell, emit smell in the glasses and due to this the girls you'll find that they are dropping off of school. So just provision of these soaps so that girls should be able to bath thoroughly, they are not smelling, they are smart when they are going to school, they are having on the pads and not using these small shitenges. If they are using the changes, they should be able to wash them up. <clears throat> so these are some of the interventions that um, I was thinking about that if we can do. Um, so if they have got people with access to the powers that be, this is just to employ you, maybe you are in position of influencing policies in schools. Just thinking about this, that maybe we can reach out to our girls so that they don't drop off of the school. Because this is a very big challenge for girls, just as I had experienced it also when I was a girl. Having said that, guys, I don't want to leave it here, but also to give an encouragement from the word of God. The book of John chapter 10, verse 10, it says that the thief does not come except to kill, to steal, and to destroy. I, Jesus Christ, have come that they may have life, that they may have it more abundantly. That's why Jesus came. So Jesus came to give us his life, abundant life. But he came, he has come to give these kids that we are talking about, abundant life also. So if they are suffering, if they are forcing the, facing these struggles, they are not having abundant life. But Jesus Christ is saying that, I have come to give you abundant life in abundance. So let us allow the Lord to use us as a conduit for delivery of this abundant life to these kids by doing these interventions, whether individually or at community level or also at the government level, the ministry level, whatever level that may be. So there you have it, guys. That's what I wanted to share with you. It's been really on my heart. It's been troubling me because I really faced these struggles. Thank you so much for paying attention to all these rantings. But I hope it's to also uh, somebody else also can really uh, attest to this, that this is really a struggle. Uh, for the young girls. Thanks so much. Don't forget to like this channel, to subscribe to this channel, and to share with your friends. Thanks so much, guys. I really appreciate you. Stay blessed.